Ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube lands, or maybe the Twitch lands, if one day I decide to do this uh, live, I want to welcome y'all to the first episode of Dakta's Orders. It is an Ark Knights podcast in which uh, I would like to just go over stuff, talk about stuff, maybe the state of the game, upcoming units, do account reviews, thoughts on certain stages, hopefully different ideas that may come about. Um, just kind of a lot of different things, and I've got segments uh, that I'm going to go through about the podcast, but it's kind of just a podcast in which I talk about Arknights. Uh, it's a game that I've been playing since technically day two is when my account was created, but I knew about it the night of day one. Um... And it's, it's a game that I've played every day since. I haven't put it down. I, oddly enough, am very enamored by it. I'm in love with it. I'm very passionate about it. And uh, if you've been to a couple of my streams, especially when I'm talking about Dusk or Passenger and their buffs, which we'll get to a little later today in the podcast, um, it's something that I, I just really love and enjoy. And so uh, I've done a podcast before for a different game. And I've been thinking and thinking and thinking about, you know, how could I run the podcast for Art Nights? And I finally came to the conclusion, and uh, this is what it is. So today, like I said, it's the first episode of Doctor's Orders, the Art Nights podcast. I'll be your host, Tuglo. And just in case you don't know who I am, um, I started my Gotcha Gaming days, Gotcha Gaming specifically, uh, back in. 2017 maybe whenever uh, Sword Art Online Memory Defrag first released to global version I had just finished watching SAO for the first time was in love with it because that was the first anime that I'd watched online you know I mean I'd seen the Pokemon and the Digimon and you know I've seen those on TV but online on a computer that was the first one I had watched and I was like man this is so cool I wonder if there's a game for it and for whatever reason I was looking it up on the app store and bam, like it had just come out and I was like, yo, this is so cool. Um, and so from there, I just kind of didn't know what gotcha games were. And if you look through this channel, you'll find, you know, all of my hype moments and reactions and reviews and gameplay and summons and all these crazy different things that I had going on for MD because it was like my first love. Like I'd never played any type of game where you you know, wail in it and, and, and summon the way you did and you had all these different rates for summons and everything about it was a whole new experience. Well, from there, uh, I had gone to Fate Grand Order, which I kind of have a love-hate relationship with going back and forth. Right now, I'm currently on it because of Musashi and I got her, but it hurt really bad, so rip. Um, but from Fate Go, I went to Don Machi, I went to Sword Art Online Integral Factor, um, I played GFL, what else? Uh, I know there was a time where I had just tried a couple different games, uh, like Azure Lane, I uh, played a little bit of Epic 7, I didn't play much of it, um, so you know, I've kind of been around the block and it's kind of like, oh I see all these games. And then, you know, I look at trailers or I look at, you know, gameplay mechanics. Because to me, gameplay mechanics are the most important thing. Uh, you could have, like, Super Mario graphics or, like, uh, Crash Bandicoot graphics of way back in the day. Where, it, you know, unless you knew what it was, you wouldn't know what it is. Because the graphics were that terrible. But the gameplay mechanics were so fun or so good that the replayability of them is what kept me going back to it, right? And that's kind of the same thing with uh, Art Knights. <clears throat> it doesn't have the most beautiful animations like Epic Seven does. It doesn't have the most beautiful characters like, you know, Azure Lane does. Or it doesn't have a lot of things that other games may have. But at the core, it's a tower defense game, which this was the first tower defense game I'd ever played. And I was like, man, this is so super fun. Like, I can't believe I, you know, this is the first time I'm playing one, you know, I'd never played Bloons or any of those other, like, tower defense games that y'all may know of. And so I was like, man, this gameplay to me is just, like, so refreshing. It's so different. 
it's the it, it was the first time I had felt uh, like a breath of fresh air since playing Memory Defrag because Memory Defrag you had to play you had to actively play you had to be good in order to get perfect runs now that's a different story when you compare it to having the best characters and then getting the perfect runs but in order to just get a perfect run you had to be good at the game you had to pair you had to do these things right and then it got into this lull of i just click you know maybe click a, a, an ability and, and it's done or maybe i do this and it's done you know it, everything was just like a you know I, I, I walk up to the enemy and then it's my turn your turn my turn your and it was just so resident sleeper to me gfl was the game that was kind of interesting because it got to a point where you started having to kite the mobs and you'd have to micromanage so that was interesting but at the end of the day it was just super uh it was super i don't want to say annoying but th that's the word that comes to my mind right now it wasn't annoying in a bad way it was just meticulous and you didn't want to have to be meticulous all the time i know there was one stream I was doing a ranking run in that game and it was like 12 hours long because I was trying to just correctly kite and, and try to get the highest score that I could. Like, dude, come on, man. Um, and so, you know, all these games finally led me to Ark Knights and I was like, man, this is like so fun because it feels as if I'm playing the game because I'm having to, you know, click the abilities when I need to or maybe, you know, auto the abilities whenever they 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 come up right but the 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 fun part of it to me is is where i'm thinking okay if i put this unit in this spot then i have to do this because of their passive and i can can i reach the heal over here how does do i have a lane to tank with this how, who am i going to help kill these these really beefy boys who are going to kill these these uh ghoster boys who you know and I've, you've got all these things to think about and it's it's exciting to me because instead of perfect play with with memory defrag now it's become a thinker's game and it's like okay i got all these different possibilities and i it's so intriguing because i go through and it's like okay this is how i cleared this stage and then i look at guys on my discourse or twink he clears a completely different completely different units using spaces that i would have never thought to use then you look at starcraft and then yotes and then run and then all these other people and all their runs are completely different and it's like dude this is so cool and uh, that's that's kind of like how how it was for me. Uh, getting into Art Knights, it was kind of random per se. Uh, I think it was around the time when I was just leaving GFL, uh, or I was kind of on that boat of like, should I stay? Should I go? You know, um, someone had come up to the chat. I was like, hey man, you know, have you heard of Art Knights? Did you want to like think about giving it a try? Blah blah blah. And I was like, at this point in time. There weren't many gotcha games coming out that were like big on the radar and so i was like never heard of it what what's the gameplay look like what's the trailer look like you know i always care to see the gameplay mechanics i don't care about your cinematics i don't care about all those things because those aren't what i'm going to be playing with uh so somebody sent me uh, a link of it and i was like mm, it doesn't look terrible uh i'll check it out i'll try it i don't know if i'll stick to it and boy was i wrong uh, so, I believe it was the first day that it came out, it released at like 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and at that time I had to wake up at like 6.30 in the morning, and I was like, yeah, I don't know what to reroll for, I haven't done the research for it, I'm just gonna go to sleep. So I go to sleep, I go to work the next day, and I'm researching at work, and I'm like, okay, you know, here are all these characters, you know, Exu looks really cool, Silver Ash looks cool, AF Biala looks really cool. And I was just writing all these names down of characters that I'd like to get in, in you know, my first reroll. And so I get home, I, I boot up the game, I, I prepare myself for a reroll session, um, as I would in most gotchas. And uh, first account, boom, Aya Fiala. And it was, you know, she wasn't a guaranteed, she was like, uh, I don't even remember if she was featured. I think it was like Exu and Ange, maybe. Um, and so I turn around and I'm like, yo, hey, if y'all, I was like, let me see if people, you know, how people's roles are looking. Didn't see anybody getting it on my server, on my Discord server. And I'm like, man, maybe he felt pretty cool. I was like, oh, this is one of the people on my list. I was like, 
but I keep this. And so as time would have it, uh, I got super lucky. I got Silver Ash, I got Siege. Um, and then I was like, you know, Exu looks really cool. I want to get me an Exu. And so I wailed a little bit for Exu. And on the way to getting Exu, I think I got like another dupe or two of Sash. I got an Ange and, like a, and then Exu or something crazy like that. And I was like, this thing count. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, then from there on, man, it just, it just kept on going. And, and here we are. And so... Uh, now that I've kind of introduced myself and kind of given you a background of how I got into the game and and kind of gave you the idea of what I'd like to do with this uh, podcast, uh, let me go ahead and just jump into the first uh, first segment, per se. And uh, for this podcast in particular, I just want to talk about the current event that's going on, which is the Rainbow Six Siege event. It's a collab, so... Uh, definitely is really nothing is gonna be guaranteed to come back these characters you know once they're gone they are gone uh so definitely you want to grab the characters uh if possible one thing that is super fantastic about owning all the characters is that when you have them in your base um in the like assistant part like at the very top uh in the middle section uh if you put all four of them in there and then you put one extra person, doesn't matter who, they do not lose morale. Like, you literally just sit them in there, all four of them, and they don't lose morale. And it is the coolest thing. Um, I'm a real big base person. I want to, like, just keep my stuff, like, I try to keep my stuff, you know, rolling, keep people always with morale, working, keep the drones used and all those. So having those characters is really cool. Personally, I know nothing about Rainbow Six Siege. Um, all I know, at least in this game, is that Ash is pretty broken. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's a collab, so it's to be expected. But, uh, with the current event, I do want to touch on the actual event itself. Um, this event was kind of your normal run-of-the-mill. Um, it felt a little easier than normal, uh, compared to other events, until we got to stage eight, which was like the the, the final stage, OD eight, and <clears throat> OD eight was something that <sighs> it was a challenge just due to circumstances given to me, but at the same time it was something that I think was a good shakeup for the game, and I'll explain a lot of this here uh, very very shortly so ODA brought in this dude or this thing uh, the essence of evolution it says I mean you can read it right there but it says a madman who should not have stepped upon this world an oddity that shouldn't have existed in the other world and basically it's a dude that poops out a lot of little minions all right and it just can constantly poops out minions that's all it does then it does like a big aoe well when you first start the stage it's it's interesting because you know i'm sitting here i'm thinking okay throw some ground units throw a couple you know single target units burst it down that's not how it worked at the beginning on the left side it has a little shield for itself to where it doesn't really take that much damage so you got to attack from the right side well, then it goes into this invulnerability state, and then it swaps. So then you got the shield on the right side, not really going to take a lot of damage, and you got to burst it on the left side. Okay, cool. Then, on the final stage, after going invulnerable, it has a shield over it entirely, but it's losing health, at, you know, constantly. And so the, the, the biggest thing that's so interesting about this entire stage to me and what made it difficult isn't that it, it was hitting really hard. It's not that all the mobs that it was pooping out was very difficult to fight. The thing that was most difficult was the quantity of mobs coming out and the debuff that they gave me. To me, it just constantly pooped out mobs. But when it got to the part where it was pooping out mobs that reduced your attack speed to like seven seconds for one attack that was where things got interesting because then you say well how do i take care of it do i 
you know, it, it's not like these little poop mobs are, are high health. It's not like they do a lot of attack. So I need to be killing a lot of them at one time. So you think, okay, well, let me take some AOE people. Let me take like an Aya. Let me take like, you know, an Ange on skill three, hit five targets. Let me take all these things. Like, man, it still don't feel like it's helping me. So then I got to the point where I was like, okay, look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take uh, Sash. I think he hits like six people because it's skill 10, uh, level 10 on his skill. Then it's like, okay, well, I'll take Silver Ash. I'll take um, Dusk on her skill two because it hits everybody within range, which is the same as Gitano. Uh, then it's, I was like, let me take Archetto because she, she can hit two people at one time. I don't need them to burst burst it down i just need them to hit all the little mobs and just and just keep them off of me right and so I, I i go into it with this mentality and i'm like man this is crazy and so yeah i could have bursted it down you know if i understood the shields properly at that point in time but i was like man let me just let me just fight it and, and just roll with it man and, and and that's how it was and that's how my auto is and it's super fun but the thing that's so interesting about this particular mob and why i think that this is like probably the best uh boss unit that we've had to date uh, at least on the, the the global server, in my opinion, is because it kind of made us, you know, not I mean maybe not y'all, but it made me think completely different. And what I like about that is because <clears throat> a lot of the bo uh, bosses or the mobs that we fought felt like steak and potatoes. And I, I you know oh I know exactly how this works. They may have different mechanic, but I put my fork on the steak. I take my knife. I cut one angle, I cut another angle, and maybe another angle, I pick up said fort, and eat. And that's kind of the, the mentality of every boss up until now, especially after Surtur came out. Take said fort, scoop it into potatoes, and eat said potatoes, you know what I mean? Well, with this one, I go into it thinking, okay, time to, time to Surtur it, and use my fork. And then go on the other side and, you know, do my normal routine and it's not working. Well, I try to go into scoop for the potatoes and it ain't working. And I'm like, hey, what's, what, what's wrong with this? And so it kind of felt like instead of giving me my steak and potatoes, it was giving me some soup. Now, what's, what's interesting about that is this entire time we've played with <clears throat> a particular set of characters because we've only been giving steak and potatoes. So we only need to use a fork and a knife, right? And that's how it's always been. That's what the community has said. Oh man, the fork and knife characters are amazing. They're broken, they're OP, they're powerful. Okay, but what happens when Yostar or Hypergriff changes it up and they say, hey, instead of giving you uh, a steak and potatoes we're gonna give you soup and ice cream and it might work but ain't going it's not gonna be as uh profitable is not the right word but it's not gonna be as advantageous to you there we go it's not gonna be as advantageous to you to use those characters and so now you say man you know what kind of characters are gonna help me out the most well now i need to find characters that are that, that are spoons so i could you know eat the soup a lot easier you know what i'm saying and so that's kind of like what I was looking at. And during the Dusk banner, when she came out, I was like, man, Dusk is going to be really good. And then we heard that they were getting buffs to Dusk and Passenger and AoE casters and all this. And for like four streams in a row, man, I was just harping on why I think it's so good. And I'll get to that later. But this mob, just the little, the little poop stains that he pooped out that slowed us down, became the... <clears throat> the soup that i was i was looking for in a world filled of steak and potatoes and and where i had been saying hey man these spoon characters are gonna be real good these spoon characters look they're getting buffs these spoon characters man and then it turns out <sighs> this dude's a spoon so now people are are taking their fork and they're sticking the knife under it and they're trying to you know clump it up like that and and the, you know they're eating a little bit but it's not much it's not as effective and so it, it became this whole thing where 
yeah, you still could find a way to burst it down. You had the bombs and you could time things differently and you'd, you'd have to do a lot of things differently. But if we just had a spoon, it'd be a lot easier. And what's what's so interesting to me, and, and I love this boss in particular, it, it was a pain in the ass because I tried to do this on a uh, on a, a challenge brought to you by StarCraft. Well, brought to me by StarCraft. And uh, he was like, hey man, try to do this with, uh, with five stars and under. It's like, okay. Could not do it. I don't have five stars leveled. I got healers leveled. I got vanguards leveled. I ain't got no damage dealers leveled. I'm a whale, dog. Like, I got six stars so I could kill stuff easily and quickly. Like, bruh <laughs> and so i don't have all these these like five stars leveled i don't have their skills level what is this and so i go in there and i'm like oh yeah this is gonna be easy this dude told me no because i thought he was gonna be a fork and knife and i would have had it if he was a fork and knife but he was a spoon you know he was a, he was a, he was a, a bowl of soup and i didn't have no spoon five stars and below and so this is why this guy to me was probably is the best boss that i've fought in Arknight so far and I really hope a lot of enemies or events in the future are kind of like this where they take away from the the fork and knife and they go to the spoon or maybe they use the chopsticks or maybe they use your hand you know whatever but that to me brings a lot of health and longevity uh, even more so to the game just because I don't have to just surter it and it's dead or I don't have to just burst it down with the same characters and it's dead because then you get to the point where yeah a fork and knife is always going to be meta because you're always eating steak and potatoes but what happens when your fork and knife has to fight soup you know it it's not really gonna be fun and so um, that's one thing that I really, really, really loved about this event was the boss. Um, that doesn't even begin to where we get to the co-op part. This was fantastic. Um, to me, I mean, I don't, I don't know where everybody's ping was. I mean, I've heard people getting like nine thousand ping. I've heard people, you know, you know, four hundred, five hundred ping, blah blah blah. I was sitting at a smooth forty to like sixty ping, like basically like league ping for me. And uh, I mean, I was playing on emulator, and I would play. I mean, of course, my computer hooked up with uh, Ethernet cord, uh, so maybe that was part of it. Maybe just living where I live, I don't really think that that's too big of an advantage to me. But being able to play co-op in this game to me was so awesome because now. I get to play with other people and I get to watch how they clear stuff. But the challenge of the map itself was also very intriguing and kind of difficult until you learn how to set up, right? And so once you learn how to set up, it becomes easier. But man, to figure it out and to go through it was so fun. And I like how that both maps are different. And then each stage is different from the last. And you, you had to attack it with different things. And it was so well done. It was very, very spot on. Um, now, it would have been interesting to say, oh, I can put my units on your stage. Uh, you could give or take that. But <clears throat> for this type of game and how it is, I think that was a good way to do it. I think it was a really good way to do it. Because now you can say, oh, <clears throat> instead of, uh, you know me on this map and you on the same exact map and we're just attacking a raid boss by doing damage to the boss in the fight right kind of like fgo calling it like co-op now if you leak i have to take care of it <clears throat> if i leak we lose and so that's it's it's so it's so cool how they just thought of that like everything to think of like how do you think of that like you know what what are y'all eating what what's in y'all's water like you know like it's so it's so intriguing to me right but not only were the stages cool they also had it to where you could do matchmaking and so for the past couple of streams i don't know you know if people needed help right but what i would do is i would say hey man 
I'm just going to run matchmaking on high pressure and on challenge on all stages, and I'll just clear whatever, you know, they need to give me. And oddly enough, I was getting a lot of high pressure more than I was challenge. Um, but still, it was so fun to see different people clearing it different ways, using different units, using the same units in different spots. And it's just so intriguing just to run through the stages and just body them and get bodied by them. It, it's so cool. I love the co-op. I really hope they bring it back. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be this exact stage. Um, it doesn't have to be this exact setup. Um, the only, uh, like, one different way that I could see it being is, like, if they took both players on the same map and the map is bigger. The only issue would be, okay, well, what if I place all my characters, like, all the way in the front and all and I'm doing all the killing? And then do it over, you know, my co-op partner doesn't get to kill anything that's not really gonna be that fun for him so you'd have to you'd have to set the map up in such a way that you know i can uh, you know kill a certain amount and they get this certain amount and it's hard to you know place my characters all over the map uh, and to do that i would i i played the the tower defense game balloons td6 and it's really interesting how they split it up. They split up the maps like in a cross sections. If you got four players, they could set it up um, uh, east and west or north and south. If you um, if you have two players, or they'll just cut it diagonally for two players. And so to me, that's really interesting because what if Ark Knights did that? What if they said, okay, you're gonna play this certain map, like certain side of the map, and you can only place your units there. Enemies are gonna come from wherever they come from, go to whatever destination, and then. It's up to you to kill them, but if you don't kill them, maybe your co-op partner has a chance to snipe them from long range, or they can pull them to them, you know, or, or you know, something crazy, right? But that's the that's like one other way that I could see them doing co-op. I don't know. I'm sure it's like coding intense. I'm sure it's probably smoked out of my mind. But if they were to do it differently from how they do it now, I think that that's one possible way that they could do it. But again, I don't know what, I don't know, you know, I think the highest ping that I had was like 120 and that was just on a spike. So I'd go like 40, 60, be chilling at 60, spike to like 120, down to 90, down to 60. And you know, I'd be chilling in that range. So, I mean, I don't know how that would work, but if they were to do something else with that, I think that that's one route that they could take. It'd be really cool. Um, aside from the co-op, we did have, um, an event oh a uh, banner come out and that was the uh, rainbow six of course it was frost blitz and ash um to me i mean you know frost is cool because i could set down a bunch of little mines and uh they just explode everywhere kind of like a backup thing that's cool uh blitz never really paid attention to it's a dude and he's just gonna be in my base anyway i'm not really gonna mess with him but ash on the other hand is a very interesting character um most of the time you are going to use her for her skill two and uh it's to my knowledge it is the first that we've seen up until this point of how something works uh, of how an ability works so um basically and, and i'm gonna be a little scuffed with it but this is what happens so you place Ash down, and she gains SP over time. Well, then you click her ability, right? And now let's say she goes into, like, machine gun mode. And anything that steps in her path or in her range, brrr, okay? But she has 31 bullets in her machine gun mode. So let's say first mob takes up 5, brrr, down to 26. Next mob, brrr, down to 21. The next one, brrr, down to 16. Well, it's going to stay at 16 until you either click that ability again and then let her start recharging it until it's usable again or she's gonna sit at 16 bullets and she's just gonna be waiting and then the next dude comes up brrr, down to maybe 10 the next one brrr, got zero and then it forces it to refresh and then it's got to build it back up so she can uh uh what's the word like put more ammo back into her machine gun basically right and so that's how her her ability works she can be at 31 bullets and nobody come into her range and she's just gonna sit there look pretty just waiting and waiting 
and then somebody steps in and it's that's 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 the main skill that uh people at least i know myself will use and uh yeah she just broke it man uh if you get a chance if you got the currency if you're well definitely pull for it uh i've, I've seen uh shout out to this youtuber 777 ucky i've seen videos where he uses ash and i think it was on a uh, future annihilation stage where uh <clears throat> this whole right side of the map was literally covered by ash and mudrock nobody else mudrock would block him and ash would just brrrr, and the, dude it was the craziest thing she's got a lot of damage she focuses air units so if you got trouble with drones or ufos she's gonna take them out it's really nice um you know you could compare her to exu maybe a small but not really um comparison to to archetto but um man if, if i were to take a pick between the three as far as if i need raw damage i'm gonna take ash she's sort of like eggs who just cracked uh, so if you get a chance uh definitely run through the pulls the way that this works in case you haven't done your pulls yet which i wouldn't know why you'd be waiting for so long um is you turn around and you start pulling on the banner once you get a five star that is either blitz or frost you then on the next five star is guaranteed to be the other but until you get either blitz or frost the first time uh you could get a bunch of other five stars you could get tilop well, never mind she don't ever show up you could get sup mm, she kind of doesn't show up either you could get like texas or um elysium you could get firewatch you could get feeder and then blitz shows up well now your next one is guaranteed to be frost so that's how the five star portion works on the six star portion it's if you are so unlucky and you just get off banner after all you know maybe you get Aya and then mudrock and then archetto and then you get silver ash and then you get exu and and you don't get ash all the way 119 pulls on the 120th pull whether it's a single or multi you will get ash guaranteed so at the very most you got to do 120 to get ash you could be super unlucky and never get blitz and frost until later but i haven't heard of any horror stories like that <clears throat> hopefully i don't ever hear any horror stories like that now as far as getting pot on them potential on them i mean you know if you want to whale cool if you don't want to cool um but you know this banner obviously you got to pull for um just for the sheer fact if nothing less for the base if nothing less for the base that's that's me man um and so you know that's that's kind of how uh this character is i mean she's really good really strong if you don't really have any snipers <clears throat> highly recommend to try to go after her and uh if anything if at the very very absolute least factor is that it's a collab and it may never come back some limited characters may come back you know for some smoked reason but collab is a lot harder to come back because you know they gotta sign the papers contracts and all these different things you know in the background that we'll never probably know of so pull for them if you can going on to the next segment is something that i call a simple strategist suggestions now this is something that uh may not be featured every every podcast episode um just depending on how many i do per x amount of time frame but uh it's something that you know hey man i like to clear stuff on my own i don't want to watch anybody else do it can you give me a hint per se i don't want to see you do it i don't want to see you give me characters on it but can you help me out give me a give me a suggestion on how you would clear and so uh you know, I, sh I asked a couple of the boys, you know, Run, Yolt, Starcraft. I've seen Twinks run. Hey, can y'all show me y'all's OD8 run? <clears throat> I, I figured this would be the perfect map for this particular podcast. Just because, you know, it's, it's the event. So let me let me run through it. And so um, I was like, hey, man, uh, let me see y'all's runs. And for the most part, we kind of all 
did the same thing more or less or i at least saw patterns of this uh couple things that i'll kind of toss out to y'all and so on od8 <clears throat> you look at this picture i got a couple symbols on here i got some red x's i got some red circles i got some red stars and i got a b for the boss so um one thing that i noticed almost to be true for every run we all blocked where the red stars are so i put vanguards there i put you know maybe i put uh, a guard there or maybe i put a caster there so that way you know i'm killing them quick enough so i don't have to block it but if anything these are the two paths that we blocked the most well then you say well what about the paths on the outside that lead to the blue boxes you know to our our point that we need to protect those were killed by other units whether they be caster units, uh, sniper units, ranged guard units, however you want to look at it, they were never really blocked off because they were killed by something else, okay? So one thing with this is <clears throat> the red X's. That is where um, two, uh, I guess, not bosses, but you know, two additional poopers come out and they start pooping out mobs. Well, one thing I noticed is some of us either prepped in, in advance to kill them immediately or some of us would put a unit down as soon as they came out and take it out. Uh, now, one person did just let it stall out and just continually poop until it was exhausted and that's fine. Um, but <clears throat> if you don't have the ability to burst down the boss or if you want to play the, the map slower uh, or you want to test units out, killing these extra side mobs that come out are going to be very helpful because now you're not having a, a constant flow of more poop on the on the on the outsides and then you got you know the, the main boss just pooping out you know on both sides so killing those two uh sides in my opinion if you could kill them as soon as they come out or relatively quickly i think that's going to alleviate a lot of pressure off of you uh and then if you look at where i have the red circles that is where I think you could turn around and place bombs um, because it's going to reach the boss and it's also going to clear the little poop stains that slow you. Um, and so it goes into a cross shape, I think, two, uh, two tiles up, down, left, and right. And so that's just enough to you know hit the boss, to clear the little poops things that are slowing you down and let your ground units continue doing attacks. Now, what units you use may good luck because I use like 10 six stars. So my run doesn't even matter unless you just whale. <laughs> but I mean, I have seen people use, you know, Spectre. I've seen the, um, the Laplands. I've seen, you know, who else is a good five star that they used uh, by Beak? by beak i've seen guard amia used uh so you know you've got your options melantha bleh! um seen this just quite a different amount of units used but um man to me i just needed my aoe stuff man give me my dusk that hits everything in range if you got gitano level yo this this map spicy but you know i don't need you to hit like a mac truck i just need you to hit everybody like quickly at one time and just aoe you know so that's kind of like a, a little suggestion for you you know bring in that aoe try to burst them down if you can pay attention to where the shield is on the boss and take care of those red x's um on the outsides as soon as possible to help alleviate the pressure also you can use the bombs to either clear the little poop stains that are slowing you or you can use the bombs to uh, burst down the boss just to me the timing of the bombs was a little difficult so i just kind of you know powerhoused it and called it a day <laughs> and so that's how that went uh if y'all got any other stages maybe in mind maybe it's from chapter stages maybe it's from uh, whatever uh, event uh maybe out if it's an event i'll probably highlight a stage myself but if it's you know a normal stage hey let me know i'd love to take a look at it take a, a try at it and clear clear it or um use uh you know give kind of some suggestions of how i view the map because maybe how i view the map 
you may look at it completely different and then say, oh man, you know, this sparks this idea. And then you roll with it. I'm not going to clear it for you, you know what I mean, unless you want me to. But but th that's what this, this segment is, is just to kind of give you a different point of view to see how, to, how a different person cleared it or how other people cleared it. And then say, I think I can attack it like this and go about your business. I've seen people, I've seen one dude, he played completely different. And he played all the way back. And that was it. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I just felt, I felt nervous watching it for how far back he played. It was just, it was insane. But uh, that's, that's going to wrap it up for, for this segment. The Simple Strategist Suggestions segment. Um, let's see, moving forward to our next segment, it is called Pick a Star. And on this, um, segment, basically, I'll be looking at the rotating banner, and more than likely, I'll be talking about the six star, unless there's a five star on there that is just so chef's kiss that, uh, that, that I need to talk about them. Um, but on this banner this current rotating banner we've got af biala the six star in the certificate shop schwarz uh as the other six star then we've got alsta liskarm who is in the yellow certificate shop and franca now like i said um most of the time i'm gonna talk about the six star and so because af yala is in the shop um I feel like she's the one that needs to be talked about. Um, if you're a long-time player, you already know the business. If you're a newish player or you're kind of just getting into the game or you've been into the game for a little bit but you don't have Aya, you don't really know much about her, um, let's roll, man. So if you go into the yellow certificate shop, you can get her for 180 yellows. Um, I had mine at like P4, I think, P4. Um, and I still bought it. Like, she's she's just that good. Uh, I've been playing this whole time, and I don't even know how I got her to P4. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was just random pulls. So being able to get your first copy is really good. Being able to get her at any other potential is really good because she's one of the uh, rare operators that increases both their first and second talent. Uh, some people are only going to increase their first talent. Some are only going to do the second. Some very rare characters do both af Yala is one of them now one really good thing about her is that she's part of the caster knights club what does that mean her passive says <clears throat> um when she's deployed all allies all ally casters excuse me gain an attack percentage buff so when she's at normal pot it's going to be one when she's at pot six, it's gonna be 16%. So 14% without pot six, 16% with pot six. Now you say, oh man, that's only 2%. That doesn't sound like much, my friend. Let me tell you how important that these numbers are scaled. I had silence, that's a healer. Um, before her passive uh, talent increase, I had her and it felt like she was lobbing up her heels. She'd reach back in and lob a heel. Reach back in, lob a heel. I got to her, whatever potential it was, to where it increased her passive and her attack speed went up by two. By two. I think it went from 10 to 12 or 12 to 14. It went from a lob to, I'm like throwing these like baseballs, man. I mean, she was chunking them things, man. She was healing real quick. And I was like, dude, it's only two attack speed. Calm down. But that's the, the, that's the difference that it felt like. And I'd, I'd never be able to forget that. And so when you see 14% to 16%, you got to think it's for all casters. And then you got to think, well, what about the casters that buff themselves and then when they use their ability, they get a percentage buff based off of that. And Aya is already buffing them as well. So it just stacks really quickly. And you get a lot of power if you know how to synergize your units. Uh, her next passive is uh, basically when you place her down, she gets a random amount of skill points. So she can cast her abilities faster. It's without the potential buff, it's 7 to 16. With the potential buff, it's 10 to 20. 
Um, doesn't sound like much that it's going to be random, but hey, you know, if I can get to that spell quicker, I'll gladly take it. Now, first skill, uh, you're never really going to use, so I'm not even going to cover that. Second skill, basically what it does is you get three charges at max, uh, max level. You get three charges, okay? When you attack, it's an auto ability, so on the next person you attack that has a charged attack, it's going to deal an AoE damage onto that mob. So they're going to take a big percent attack, and then the dudes around them are going to take half of that. So you're going to get an AoE attack. Additionally, what happens is that the main person that gets hit is going to have a, a, a debuff on them, an arts resistance debuff on them. So they're going to take more damage from Aya. So Aya is going to attack the main dude. He's going to lose he's going to get minus 25% arch resistance debuff. And the more that she attacks him, she's going to deal more damage. It doesn't stack. So she's going to be that 25%. But she's going to hit him harder. Well, then you add in other casters and now this one dude is just getting demolished and then Aya is able to spread the debuff quicker. But she's still doing an AoE. So she's a single target caster that the skill 2 does an AoE. A mini, a mini AoE. So she's pretty strong on that. The third skill on this is going to be the uh, volcano skill. It's literally called volcano. And it looks like a volcano. Like her tile range for it looks like a volcano. Basically, her range expands, gets really huge. And then when it's at level 10, it can hit up to six enemies and she attacks really fast. So she like when I first got her like to E2 and I was like, oh man, let me try this skill. I was like, yo, she's pissing lava, dude. Like literally just pfft. she's like a, um, a fire hydrant and, and it's just lava just everywhere on all the mobs. Now, the only issue with that, and it's not even really an issue, but the difference on that that kind of scales it back is that it's only six mobs but what if you have like a crap ton of mobs in that range and she can only hit six at a time so it's it's gonna be a random target so you know you may be hitting the little dudes first and then like constantly on one big dude right you may be hitting all the big dudes i'm not sure on how the targeting system would work but it's not gonna be like gitano skill it's not going to be like dust skill 2 that it hits everything in that range. You're only going to hit 6 people. If you got 5 people, you're hitting 5. If you got 7, you're only going to hit 6. And then that 7th person is going to get hit once one dude dies. And so uh, that's one thing that you got to remember. But regardless, the ability, absolutely broken. And, uh, you know, both of those skills very much worth leveling to level 10. Very, very, very good. She's the type of character that can turn around and be put on your team at all times. You can always use her, whether she's going to be skill 2 for, you know, just constant, consistent damage, or whether she's going to be on her skill 3 to burst a unit or a couple enemies down. She's someone that you can always put on your team and always feel comfortable and always feel safe with her on your team. <clears throat> And honestly, that's why Aya is one of those characters that, because she's in a shot man, that is 100% like prime time to get her. Because gotcha be gotcha, but man, I get that free, super good character, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. So, after this uh, segment, of course, the next one I want to talk about is going to be upcoming six star units now um assuming that they don't change up the order of how they're going to release units <clears throat> the next one that is supposed to be coming out is passenger now passenger is an aoe caster but he's a little different. He's like a chain AoE. So the way that I would explain it to you, if you have lazy then you, and you've used lazy, you'll know what... It's basically six-star lazy. 
if you don't know who lazy is or if you've never used lazy the way that that works is think of it like a lightning ability let's say you got four dudes that are, are relatively close to each other and i throw a lightning blast at the first dude typically it's gonna chain react and it's gonna hit the next dude and then the next dude and then the next dude but it's gonna do less damage as it moves on right that's basically how passengers auto attacks are so he's gonna just doom 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 um on the on the auto attacks now oh man so i've got a lot to say about passenger and i really love passenger um and you're probably thinking oh well everybody that i list uh you know watch videos on or everybody that i hear talk i always say passenger you skip 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 well here's where i go back to the previous you know earlier segment where i was saying we've been eating steak and potatoes so all we need is a fork and a knife if there ever comes an opportunity where you can use a spoon he is the perfect spoon character okay you could also in theory easily eat steak with a spoon you just hold it there and then you just cut around it that's the difference you can eat mashed potatoes with a spoon too you could get a lot more mashed potatoes on a spoon than you could afford i'm just saying also here's one thing here's one 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 thing that i'd like to say about about this guy before i go into what he does and how he works and why i like him so much you can eat steak and potatoes with a spoon but it's a lot you you can't eat soup with a fork and i'm gonna leave it at that i'm gonna leave it at that i'm gonna leave it at that yeah yeah you <laughs> So let's go ahead and let, let me go ahead and, and talk to y'all about this man. So originally, whenever the chain lightning attack would bounce, it would be reduced by 25% per jump. Now it's reduced by 15%, so he got a buff. He also got um, a stat buff to his like attack and his health and um, his defense. And you got to remember, again, two attack speed on silence was a huge difference i can only imagine the difference that's going to be on passenger that's going to be on dusk that's going to be on all these other characters so we could be up for some very interesting times if people learn to play you know if they learn to to fight or to eat the uh the stick of potatoes with a spoon it could be very very interesting but it could be even more so interesting if Hypergrip or if Yostar was like, hey, we're going to start feeding y'all spoon enemies. We're going to start feeding y'all soup. Y'all got a spoon ready? That could be very interesting. So uh, he is one of the characters that has a first and second talent enhancement. Very good. Um, you know, you're not just getting it to a redeploy, um, you know, extra redeploy time. Yeah, I don't care about that, man. You know, if my dude dies, I'm probably screwed. Um, so his first passive or his first talent says when attacking enemies with 80% or more HP increase passengers damage dealt to them by 20% for 3 seconds so here's how it works passenger is not the type of dude that's going to sit behind the tanks or he's going to be off to the side and just hitting like this no 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 passenger has to be the first guy to attack he has to attack first. If he's not attacking first, and if he hits somebody that's at 79% or less health, he's already losing on a huge chunk of damage. So he's got to be the first one to attack. That's what that passive says. The second passive is when there are no enemies in the four adjacent tiles, you increase attack by 8%. Adjacent tiles in this game are going to be your north, south, east, and west. You're up, down, left, and right. Um... So as long as he is attacking them from a range and there are no enemies on those four tiles, he is at optimal damage output. Now, of course, when you get them, when you get him to a higher potential, it's going to increase his damage. Um, but I mean, you know, I don't really think people are going to go for P6 because that's just the type of game we're playing right now. You know, we're running you know steak and potatoes and i'm trying to tell y'all hey 
it could be really fun. It could be really cool to change the meta and say, hey, we're going to run this with spoons. And then the developers are like, oh, well, they're running spoons. Let's give them enemies for that. Instead of just saying, okay, how are we going to build the next event or the next enemy around fork and knives? Because the community only plays fork and knives, so we got to build fork and knife uh, uh, meal. Okay, well, uh, now it kind of... It's reskinned and it has different mechanics, but at the end of the day, I'm still using the same characters and still beating them the same way. And so, if you have a spoon or you have chopsticks or you make me eat with my hands and it's like a burger and fries, like, hey, you know, that could be really, could be really cool. Um, so that's what that dude's pa uh, passive does. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, his second ability increases his range so he attacks further and it reduces his attack interval so he attacks faster okay and now his attacks bounce between five targets instead of four so he's attacking at a further range he's doing a, a little bit more attack damage his attacks hit more people and he's attacking a lot faster that's what his second skill does his first skill, his attacks increase a lot, or rather, excuse me, the next attack. So he charges it up, you know, it's 5 SP, then the next attack. So that next attack is going to deal a lot of damage, uh, an increased percent damage. It's going to bounce between four people. And then the slow effect that that attack does is going to be increased by just a little bit. That's what his first skill is. It's not really that. His first skill kind of meh. Second skill, kind of cool. Uh, kind of not terrible. Uh, it really plays on the fact of I can be further back and still attack you from that range. Uh, so that way he's at optimal damage. But the third skill. The third skill. Yeah. Yeah. So the third skill is the same as the A of Fiala. Um range okay and so what's going to happen is you're going to generate a lightning storm centered on the target with the highest hp within this range okay so if dude is over here the highest hp dude you're going to start right there that's where that's where your ability is going to be pinpointed at okay and so now what it does is that lightning storm lasts for four seconds so now it says you're going to do an additional attack dealing whatever percent damage against a random enemy within this pinpointed spot every half a second okay so what's happening is we're constantly hitting the dude with the highest hp all right and then every half second boom 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 like that that's how it works constant hit on one dude and then on another and that's how his ability is just gonna work it lasts for four seconds. He can hold up the two charges, so that's good. Uh, and he's got a 30 SP cost, which is, is fantastic. But remember, the way we have to attack with this guy, he's got to attack them first. So he's already going to be further up in, in the map. So it's really good if he can get them at the, the beginning or like way before your units start attacking him. So that way he can chunk them down and they're already weakened and slowed. And then your units start bursting whatever comes in. And he's done his job. His job isn't to to burst them all the way to death. It's not to to execute them when they're low. He is the first guy that is going to attack, and that's how he plays. Um, now, speaking about this guy, unless so, it really sucks, man. It really sucks because unless you understand how to play with your characters and the synergies around your characters for instance kobe you're not supposed to put kobe you're she's supposed to be on a tile that her up down left and right nobody's on because if you do she loses damage on that she loses like attack speed and like attack percentage or something like that but if you constantly put her and somebody's in those tiles she's losing out on damage right and so <clears throat> unless you know how to play with these characters you're gonna be like man they suck they're not that good i could just use this and have been fine right so should you pull for this dude 
if you understand how to play and you understand that you are going to use a spoon to eat steak and potatoes, you're going to use a spoon and a knife instead of a fork and a knife, yeah, pull for him. If you think he's cool, pull for him. But the real question that should be asked, is there content available in the game that is soup based for this spoon character? Currently, the best enemy to have used him on was this dude in OD8. He would have been the most perfect like soup ever for this spoon character, but unfortunately he wasn't out. Now I'm hoping that Hypergriff or Yostar uh, in the future puts out characters or enemies to where it's not just steak and potatoes. We get soup, we get you know sushi, we get cheeseburgers, we get pizza, we get, you know all these different foods that are forcing us to go away from a fork and a knife. Fork and knife is cool, but then you got to think. I'm only going to get fork and knife characters because I'm only getting steak and potatoes. What about a spoon for, you know, a soup? What about chopsticks for sushi? And so on. So if you understand it, if you like to be the collector, if you're a whale, pull for dude. Um, I really think, I really think he has the potential to be good. If you don't pull for him, the next character after that is going to be Scotty Alter and Kaltzit. Um, Kaltzit, she's basically a healer that is going to be able to summon a little monster. And that monster does a crap ton of damage. And she basically heals that monster. And she heals other people too. Priority on the monster. Scotty Alter, I've talked myself out of pulling for her. The only reason I would pull for her is Waifu. She's a live 2D art. And she's limited. Gameplay wise, I'd probably never never level her Just for the fact of what she does, right? She like she basically makes it to where I can do true damage to the enemies Like while her buff is on right? The only issue with that is if I'm gonna maximize buffing my characters Right, then I would be wanting to use war fighting skill too. I'd be wanting to use suzerain I'd be wanting to use sorry skill three. Uh, I'd be wanting to use Scotty Alter. I'd be wanting to have Sora. I'd want to have um, Shamare or Praminix. I'd want to have all these different characters that are buffing my my comrades and debuffing my allies, right? Well, let's just say that that's five people. Well, then you got to put in at least one more healer just to be safe. So let's just say another healer. And then let's say you want to put in one tank because you got Saria, so we'll put in one more tank. Well, then you need vanguards for um, for DP gen. Okay, let's just say Texas and Myrtle. So now I have nine characters, nine spots already filled, and I get three damage dealers. So what three damage dealers are going to fit into that realm? That's if I just want to be as optimal and just buff the crap out of that. Also, you could use Act. I forgot about him. So that's 10 spots that are filled now. And now I have two spots for damage dealers. And how am I going to optimally, you know, at the best, you know, use all these buffs and such. I'm, I'm not going to figure that out. I don't want to do that. So, you know, you could get her and say, oh, yeah, well, I'm still going to use the true damage buff and, and one other thing and call it a day. And I'm just going to use all these other damage dealers. Well, that's not how I like to play. But, I mean, she's hot. So, yeah, you can pull. Um, but if you don't want to pull passenger and you just want to keep moving on with the fork and knife, fork and knife, fork and knife, skip passenger because that's a spoon. And just pull for the next fork and knife. Scotty, that's tough, man. I would call her more of a, a knife character that isn't really necessary. That's just me. Only reason why she's got like a high target on her, she's limited and has a live 2D skin. That's, that's just me. And so uh, that's that's kind of like what our upcoming six stars are. Um, you know, that, that's, that's just the nature of it. Now, you're going to say, well, why am I like so high on Passenger? Why am I so high on Dusk? Why am I so high on, you know, 
on these spoon characters. Um, and that's simply because of this chart right here. If you take a look at this chart, this is the buffs that a bunch of characters are getting. Uh, AoE casters are getting buffs. Mastama, Dusk, Skyfire, Gitano, Purgatory. These, All these units are getting buffs. They're getting attack up, HP up. Uh, you look at guards, uh, don't really care about any of them on there, to be honest with you. Scotty, nobody's really going to use her. Uh, Melantha, I mean, she's already really strong. Giving her a buff is kind of questionable, but hey, it is what it is. Um, then you look at um, the chain casters, Lazy and Passenger. And uh, like I told y'all before, two attack speed to silence was incredible. But now look at the look at the, these these attack ups that we're getting. Passenger is getting seventy eight extra attack. Do the math on that, man. It's incredible the damage that he could potentially do if you play him correctly. Oh man, you take a look at Dusk. Look at the damage that she can do. Mine's P five because I saw this and I'm freaking out about it. And I'm very much on the caster knights train. I've got plenty of uh, casters that I need to level. I've got a good team comp around them. And these buffs are just going to increase the, the feel for it. But don't forget, we don't have these buffs yet. They aren't going to come until the future. So when Passenger comes out, if you do pull for him, guess what? He's not going to have this buff yet. So he's going to be a little weak. Until he gets that buff, then he becomes stronger. So like, he'd be like a spork, and then he becomes like the full-fledged spoon, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, if you want to do it backwards, he's a spoon and becomes a spork, whatever. But these buffs are really good. The equipment is really good. Why? Because going into the new segment, they're adding things which is good they're they're saying hey we understand that these characters are weak and we understand that y'all might not like them because they're not the fork and knife but we need to buff these spoon characters we need to buff these um these uh chopstick characters because here's here's my thing what if they have sushi enemies coming out for us what if they have uh soup type enemies coming out for us what if they have like a burger or pizza that's coming out for us that's gonna be really really good buffs because you know i don't it, spoiler alert there is a enemy that is literally anti mudrock and anti surter they literally said y'all can't use this like we are going to do our best to make sure that y'all can't clear it with these two units bruh if that doesn't scream broken, I don't know what does, right? So now to compensate for those two, we're going to buff everybody around. We're going to buff all these other type of units. And that's what I love to see, man. Y'all, to, to, to me, I see these buff numbers. And yeah, they're just number increases. But man, you got to think every number matters. Every number is so precise. That if they did it a little bit over or a little bit under, it may not be worth it, right? Well, if it was over, it'd be broken. If it's under, it may not be as good. But to have it to where they did, man, I you know they had to test that. You know they had to test that. Otherwise, they'd just be buffing it and it'd still be useless. And so I'm really excited for these changes. I'm really excited for uh, the equipment that's coming out for the summoners. Because now, I'm going to be able to use Magalan and at least one drone which could change the game for a lot of things because now i can slow one area well what if i slow that area and passenger uses his ability and he just blows up everybody that's underneath that drone right what if i i use um uh magalan's drone that you know does damage underneath that tile but what if I take Mastema, stun it, stun like some mobs in that group, and then just put that drone in and it's just... Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of not being able to have that extra drone, now it opens up, not a whole lot, but it opens up different spices, different 
herbs, different flavors that we can now go into and say, oh man, yo, uh, I used to only have just steak by itself, but now I can put like some dry rub on it. Now I can season it just a little bit. Oh, these potatoes over here? Yeah, now I can put some cheese. Now I can put some, some sour cream. Now I can put some bacon in it. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what I'm reading when I see this. And to me, that makes it very, very, very nice. Because then you say, it's not just these units. What if other units get buffs? You know, what if, you know, the, the unit type like Heliger can't be healed, but he heals himself when he does damage? What if they say he's not strong enough? We need to take his heal from a 70 uh, health point heal per hit to 100. That's going to change a lot of things, man. The people that I'd be taking in in his spot, you know, whether it be, I, I don't know, dude, whoever you want. Dude's just going to be able to hold the lane a lot better, man. And you, you, you think about these buffs, and it really makes me say, dang, all these things that could happen, I really hope happen. But in order for it to happen, the community's got to understand for the, the whole fork and knife to chopsticks to, to spoon to eating with your hands. For them, for us to understand this concept, then the devs can turn around and be like, oh, hey, they finally see something different. Let's go ahead and start making soup. Let's make that sushi. Let's make that cheeseburger. Let's make those pizzas of enemies. And then that's when things get spicy. Because what happens when you say, oh, this map now requires me to have chopsticks and a spoon. And then you don't even play with your surter, no mud rock, no silver ash, no Aya. And now you're playing with units like Passenger, Scotty Alter, Archetto, Rosa, Blemish. And, and you got this whole, whole conglomerate of a what in the world is that? and you take them in and they just absolutely demolish. Whereas if you took them in versus steak and potatoes, you'd be like, yo, this game sucks. Like these units are trash. It's not that they're trash. It's the environment that they're put in is not optimal for them. It's like that age old thing of like judging a fish on its ability to climb a tree. It's basically what it is. That's basically what it is. And so these changes right here are super nice. I'm very excited for them. I'm so happy. Uh, I can't wait to see them. But the most important thing is I hope the devs bring out content that lets these units shine. If they don't do that, these buffs are meaningless. And uh, that's, that's something we really got to pay attention to. That's something we got to hope for. We got to be careful about. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, it is what it is from there. Um, during this segment... Uh, you know, I'll be talking about a lot of different things, like a lot of different game modes, a lot of different feelings or thoughts about the current state of the game. Um, but this time around, I just wanted to, to kind of talk about these buffs and these equipments solely because I talked about um, Passenger. Because he's our next six star coming up. And he's somebody that, you know, you could sleep on him, but, you know, hey, and this is what I told some of my boys. If you have me on your friends list, you will own him by association. So, you know, hey, if you get him on the friends, if I, you know, hey, if you're on my friends list, you got a passenger. So, you know, hey, congrats. But that's just all the, the thoughts about these changes. Really great. Um, but I've got more things that I'd like to talk about in future segments for um, the game during this time. Uh, next thing that we're going to do is um, something that um, I see some streamers do it. And I was like, oh, how, how can I do that? I want to do that. Um, and it's doing account reviews. <clears throat> oh, oh. Uh, it's doing account reviews. And so uh, these are the two things. Um, or, you know, I, I ask a lot of questions before I do an account review for someone. Uh, and I got the questions link, uh, on the picture underneath the webcam, but I'll read them out. Uh, first question is, what are you looking for out of the game? Are you looking for CC clears, like getting a 
uh, an 18 for the medals? Are you looking for Annihilation or are you looking for a story mainly? You know, what are you, because that helps me kind of point into what direction I need to go. Are you a whale or are you free to play? Do you care about the meta or do you care about waifus and husbandos? Are you going to play for the long term and you know you're going to stick with the game and you're going to be constantly playing it so that way you can save up currency and do pulls on good banners? Or are you playing for the short, short term and you just want to see what can I get right now, play it now, and then I'll be off of the game in a couple of months, you know, two months or so, right? I also like to ask people, uh, do you want to level low rarity units first and then level the high rarity units later? Or do you want to struggle a little bit early on and only level high rarity units? That's the route that I took. And honestly, it wasn't even that bad. And then uh, another question I like to say is, is or ask is, what's your play style and uh, who do you like to play around? So, for instance, <clears throat> y'all may have noticed I said caster knights. Uh, I used to be heavy on surter knights. I used to be, you know, on guard knights, defender knights, you know. Oh, I really love Schwarz as a character. <clears throat> so Schwarz has to be in every one of my teams. I want to use her to clear everything, right? That's what I mean by that uh, final question. And so, um, as a quick wrap up, uh, I just wanted to review an account. And so um, this is Taz's account. Um, now Taz, uh, he answered uh, my my questions. And his first question, you know, I'll, I'll read out his answers. Uh, first one is, I just want to be able to clear the bare minimum of everything for the most rewards. So right there, that tells me he wants to clear Annihilation. He wants to get a uh, 18 risk on CC. So you've got to have some good units, some meta units. Um, so he he's not going to be the type of person that's like, oh, I'm going to level my Gitano to max. And it's going to be like really good. You know, like, let's be real here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, she could be good. But like, you got to be big brain for that. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, you could level other people and get away with it and you'd be all right. Um, so that's kind of the thought process that I'm seeing. Then he, then he says, I used to wail a bit, but now I'm free to play. If you've put money into the game once, you may put money into the game again. If a new character arises uh, that's super OP broken or if it's like Omega Waifu. So, well, we'll say Dolphin Territory. Meta is always toxic and gotcha, so I just use what I have. Guess that makes me a waifu user. Not necessarily. Uh, because you've got some units on here that are very meta. And it's very strong. <clears throat> and makes your life a lot easier. So being able to mix the both of them. I'll, I'll go through that also. Long term or short term? He says long term. Now I've known Taz uh, for a while. And he has his spurts of he's on the game for an event. And then just dry spill may skip an event um and then comes back plays for about a week and then comes back so that that's more of a sporadic um so i've got to take that into account <clears throat> then it says uh we all know here the, the next question the answer is we all know six stars do most of the work but i'm not against using low rarity if they are actually of use cool i got a couple people in mind and then finally, on that last question, is there a certain play style? Answer is still soul searching. So now, uh, looking at the characters, I asked him to put it in rarity order from highest to lowest, and we're just going to go from there. So uh, looking at this account, um, you know, we've got units like the Mudrock, we've got the Thorns, uh, two very solid units. You know, we're, we're just taking a look at the six stars for right now. Um, we scroll it down just a little bit. We got Siege and Act down here. Those are okay. Um, but we've also got people like the Ash, very strong. Sash, very strong. Saria, very, very good. Blaze, very good. Uh, Silver Ash, very good. Um, six star wise, they just need more levels. Um, you know, your units like Saria needs more levels. You know, Sash needs more levels. Ash got to be E2 to get more levels. 
Uh, Shining could use more levels, uh, depending on what other five-star healers you have. Um, but purely looking at six stars alone, you know, these levels, E2 level 30, that'd be fine if we were in the first three events of the game. But we're in big boy territory now. Even I have, like, units at, like, E250, and I'm kind of saying, like, man, I wish I was, like, E260. Or, man, I wish it was, like, E265, E270 um, for my six units. And so, you know, they're not going to keep it at that E230 level. So one thing that you really want to be cautious of is your levels. Um, but even more so is the skill level of those units. So, for instance, uh, I think me and Run, we were doing, uh, well, I was doing the math, but it was my Blaze versus his Blaze. Mine was, like, level 90 with skill level 7 his blaze was like level 50 or something or 60 with skill level 10 and i was like oh yeah i bet mine does more damage and he was like no nah, i bet mine does and i was like okay well let's just do the math his did more damage and it was 30 levels under so make sure you have your skill levels leveled up as well um so the good units good units on the six stars uh five star units uh let's take a look let's take a look how far are we going now oh, we got a lot of five stars here okay uh, let's see five star units scene could be good for stalling not terrible um, let's see feeder does he have shaw leveled okay yeah he's got shaw leveled so that's fine that's the push unit cliff heart does he have rope leveled yeah ropes leveled a little bit I mean it's only push and pull and we're gonna get a six star uh, pull unit so ropes not really too important cliff hearts not too important uh, Beeswax is cool, but that's only for me. Let's see. These two healers are, are mad. They are getting buffs, though, so we gotta look out for them. Warfighting, that is a healer that I really do believe is a very strong healer. She's got a buff on her um, that increases, like, a uh, comrade's attack for a certain amount of time. Um, also, her first skill, which is what I use it for when I play Surter Knights, is that if they're under 50% health or under, yeah, 50% health, she heals them for, like, a crap ton more. So that's very good. Uh, she's a good healer to look out for. Uh, Liskarm, let me go back up to your defender. Uh, if you if you level Hoshi and you level Saria, you're fine, but you've got Mud Rocks, so Liskarm is okay. Liskarm is really there if you've got little baby enemies hitting you for a lot. And then you can battery them to someone else. But realistically speaking, you're not really going to do that often. Most of the time, you're just going to be like, hey, let me beat the shit out of you. Call it a day. Um, so list Karm, I'm fine with not being leveled. Lazy. Y'all know how I feel about that once she gets that buff. Um, but Lazy is interesting. But uh, let's see. What casters do you have? You have Ifrit. That's a single target lane. That's fine. Um... Kobe, you you gotta you gotta watch out for the positioning for the passive, but she's okay. Um, AOE speaking, you really don't have an AOE caster. Uh, let's see, what else do you got? You got lazy. You do have Skyfire leveled, so that's yeah. Skyfire could could do the work for you. Um, so you, you don't necessarily have to level lazy. That's fine. Um, Glaucus being leveled is fine. You don't have Ange for a slow. And Glaucus actually slows and stuns. So I actually, I like that one a little bit better than, uh, than Ange. Neural. Neural is someone that is a hidden six star. She's someone that is basically a budget Saria. But man, do I use the crap out of her. Um, if I need to hold the lane or if I need extra heals, uh, definitely always running neural with Saria in the Surter Knights comp. Very, very good healer. Very, I highly recommend to level her. I hope she can help you out a lot. Um, let's see. Now, Firewatch is a very interesting character. Um, that's someone that I've been thinking a lot about leveling uh, even further because I think mine is like E240 or E250 maybe. Um, Firewatch, I've seen her do quite a good amount of damage. It's not broken amounts of damage, but it is solid enough for me to think about using her. So I would keep an eye out on Firewatch. 
um, as someone that you might want to level. Blue Poison. A lot of people like Blue Poison. She's a arts sniper that prioritizes drones, so she's good in that sense. Um, but you have Exu, you have Shores, you have Ash. I don't need her leveled if I'm playing on your account. Um, by Beak is cool, but she's got to be constantly attacking to get her attacks, uh, her skill off. So it's, it's kind of mid. Manticore, not terrible. Um, I've seen her used in stalling comps. She can get damage off. Uh, and, and be fine because she can be invisible, but <sighs> meta-wise, it's kind of meh. You're not really gonna expect her to do a lot of work on your uh, risk 18 in C in contingency contract, but she can do work. You can play around her, but I can pick someone else for that position or or for that spot in my 12-man roster. Uh, these two right here, Telopsis and Silence, 100%. They need levels. They need levels. You don't have Nightingale. You don't have Warfarin leveled. Uh, your Shining is is leveled. Uh, your Shining is leveled, but she's also 20. But, man, both of these need levels. You get 0.3 SP per second off of Telopsis talent, which is very good for charging your skills faster. And you also have Silence. What I think is like a seven star healer. Silence can heal anybody, anywhere because of her drone. And if you get her skill to level 10, that thing is up so fast. It's insanity. Um, so I think that she, those two are, are people that I would definitely uh, be leveling. They're very good. Um, if, if I take healers, I'm 10 times out of 10 always thinking silence and telopsis first. Unless I need um, <clears throat> increased defense or if I need arts dodge, I'm taking the six stars. But on a general purpose, I'm taking these two over the six stars. Like, that's just me. That's just me. Spectre, if you do decide to level her, um, she can have the, um, the, the downtime of where she's one health and doesn't die. But she's got 10 seconds of a stun. Um, so she could be very good. I've seen her used in, in CC videos. Very strong. Uh, especially on, on daily 8 uh, maps. Very, very good unit. Lapland, a lot of people love her because she's got the silence on the spiders. I'm not a big fan of her. Uh, I can just kill the spiders when they're further away. Maybe you can't. Well, your account definitely can. But for whatever reason, you need to silence someone. That's your go-to. Um... Other units can silence, like Waifu can silence um, on her... It's either her first or second skill. But you'd have to redeploy her to constantly silence. You know, it is what it is. Texas, definitely one of my go-to vanguards. My go-to vanguards are Texas and Myrtle. If I only get two spots, that's, who, that's who's getting them. Third spot is going to... Um, bagpipe. The only reason why I say that... So this bagpipe gives extra skill points when they're deployed to other vanguards. My Texas skills level 10, my Myrtle skills level 10. Within like two seconds of them being placed down, I already have their abilities used. Um, a lot of people, you know, we just got Saga. A lot of people are hyped on Saga. I don't really care for her. I mean, she's cool. She's really good on her skill 3 because I get to use her passive that way. But on her skill too, she just covers her own lane. That's fine too, but I don't, I'm not using you for that. I'm using you for your skill three, so that way I can charge up other people's skills like Dust skill three. It takes like 100 to charge. Blaze takes a lot to charge. That's where I would use Saga. But on a general purpose, let me run through this and just charge up DP, Myrtle, and Blaze in, in, in Texas for me. And then if I have a third spot, I'm taking Bagpipe. So you could level Texas 40 is fine, but the more levels the better. Project Red, a lot of people uh, use her for that quick stun. That's fine too. That's not terrible. Um, but for me, if I'm taking someone, I'm taking Gravel because she's going to actually be able to take hits. Because what happens if you can't stun a boss, right? I would take someone that can take hits, one, two, maybe three hits over someone that's just going to stun somebody. 
that's just me so i personally like gravel over um over project red now looking at your account your account's fine you've got all the units just on five and six stars alone i could easily take your account and play um play anything um the only issue is levels and maybe skill levels you know i don't know what the skill levels are for all these units but levels you know get them to 50 get them to 60 call it there and your account's fine um let's see four stars we got the gravel i like j uh i see some people use j i don't use j i got people to do damage that's not j so it is what it is myrtle i like um i mean you could use like these four stars but you have hoshi mudrock and sorry i don't need cure you have telopsis silence and shining i don't need perfumer you have um you have a little debate for gitano because she's already e160 but at that point i've already got skyfire i've got ifrit um i have um kobe as well don't really need gitano uh where would um yeah tbh i mean yeah you could level other four stars for fun if you want to play them you could use your three stars for fun if you want to play them but i mean tbh you could literally clear I'd say you could probably clear everything in the game with what you got right now. Uh, only issues that I would see are... You, you might want to level an AoE caster. So, if you can grab Aya out of the shop, I would definitely grab Aya. If you can't grab Aya, I would definitely be leveling Skyfire. Um, you, I mean, you've got, you've got it in the control. Literally, your, your account is fine. In my opinion, you've got the units. You've got a lot of things to set you up. Um, so you shouldn't have any issues with anything. Character-wise. Um, now, whaling, that's a different story. You know, who who could you whale for? Who could you uh, do a lot of these different things for? Um, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna pick someone that's on my radar, I definitely want an Aya. Um, as someone that I would be looking out for. Otherwise, man, you've got heals, you've got tanks, you've got guards, you've got arts damage. Uh, you've got, even if you don't have arts damage, you've got Schwarz that penetrates defense like crazy, so you're fine on that. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you're, you're fine, man. Um, as far as, like, you know, if I don't have this character, who could I run with, you know, Really, the biggest person that, that that I'm going back to is your is your AOE casters. That that's that's probably the biggest issue that I would have there, because uh, you don't have a monster. I mean, you don't have an Aya. Uh, Suzerain could be nice, but again, those three that I just named off are, are pretty meta heavy. Aya Fiala, very general everything, so good. Um, hmm. Yeah, man, I mean, IMO, your account's fine. You've got a lot of good units. Um, you don't really have to hard focus on one unit. Like, when I when I say hard focus, right, like, I'm not saying, like, oh, man, you have to have beeswax leveled, right? No. Like, you have all of your important units leveled. Anything that's, like, base level or E1, and then you, like, level it up, that's of your own volition. Like, your account can clear everything you know maybe a few levels maybe skill levels aside from those two things your account's fine um so yeah it, it, yeah there's there's nothing else to say on this account man it's, that is what it is um and so i mean to look at it like that that is a solid account um a lot of accounts that i well i the the two accounts that i have looked at are nowhere near as stacked as this account. This is a, a very stacked account. Um, having that amount of six stars, having them at E2 already, having you know all those very good five stars leveled, having the good four stars leveled, very, very solid account. 
all he needs is levels, skill levels, and then as long as you understand how to play the game and you understand, you know, what the enemies do, easy, easy account to play on. Um, nothing that needed to be focused. You know, you've got all the meta units. You've got solid waifu units if you like them. Um, you've got units that can clear um, a risk 18 to give you the, the highest medals to get, you know, all the medals for events. You've got the units. They just need levels. Um, and then aside from that, if you still struggle, that's on you and needing the understanding of how to play against whatever enemies are being thrown at you. Um, and that's, that's kind of, that's kind of the podcast, man. Um, it's something that, you know, I, I, uh, just enjoyed doing. I enjoyed talking about the game. Um, a bunch of different segments, you know, the segments may not be as long on the next one. Some of them may be cut out because what if we don't have an event that's going on? What if we don't have blah, 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 right? But... Uh, if you've made it this far, one, I'd really like to thank you for watching the first episode of Adakta's Orders. Um, secondly, uh, if y'all would want to share this around with maybe other people that enjoy the game, maybe your favorite content creators, streamers, YouTubers, uh, whatever. If they take a look, if y'all take a look, if y'all maybe see this and say, hey man, I'd love to join and you know talk about XYZ, cool, come on on. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you first, I'll get to know you and see if if you know it'd be a fit or not because maybe we maybe we clash too much maybe we don't maybe we fit solidly who knows anyway um that's uh you know this is something that i've i've been wanting to do for a super long time to talk about art nights to do a podcast uh the last podcast i did i had so much fun on uh and it was just so nice to just talk about something that i really like for as long as I wanted to about whatever topics that I chose and you know just go from there and so uh, if y'all do enjoy the series you know please I mean y'all you know y'all know what everybody every other youtuber says like share subscribe turn on notifications whatever um, only thing that I can't guarantee is I don't know how often I'll do these maybe it's twice a month maybe it's once a month maybe it's once every time there's an event coming around maybe it's uh once every two weeks you know I I, I don't know um, I've got a lot of things that I, I, I want to talk about with the game so I could easily pump out a lot more um, things. It's just I don't know the timing of how I'd like to do it. And so for right now, this is the first episode. There will be more in the future. Um, I've got a lot of things that can easily stem out from this and build upon. And so uh, I really had a good time with it. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope y'all had a good time as well uh, with the podcast. Leave comments down below if you want. Share them with your friends. Um, share them with your favorite content creators. Let anybody, you know, see it that likes Art Nights if you want to share it. Cool. But I hope you all enjoyed this uh, first episode of Doc Does Orders. A lot of different segments that may not be back all the time, but I guarantee you I, at the very least, will be back. Thank you all for watching so much. Uh, y'all can catch me on uh, YouTube. I think it's LOL Tuglo OP YouTube dot com slash l o l tuglo o p league of legends tuglo overpower um that's what it's supposed to stand for and then uh if uh you want to catch me on twitch you can catch me at twitch.tv slash tuglo t-u-g-l-o-w and finally if you want to join the discord where i will be most active um there should be a link underneath in the description box or you can find it on my twitch channel uh, if you like anime, if you like Twice, uh, K-pop, I'm mainly, mainly Twice, JYP, uh, JYP Entertainment Artist. But, you know, if you like K-pop, you like anime, you like, you know, Art Nights, Mobile Gaming, I've got it at the Discord. We've got some folks who, who enjoy that as well. So you may be a good fit, or if you just got questions and you want to uh, get them answered, by all means, join the Discord. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I won't sell this any longer. Hope you all have a great rest of y'all's time. Peace.